Welcome to our closing session for the Olive Forum 2023. So to begin, I would like to call to the stage, please, the chair of the Aleph Foundation Board, Dr. Thomas S. Kaplan. You have the floor. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatu lai wa barakatu. Your Excellency, my dear friend, the Minister of Culture and Youth of the United Arab Emirates, Salem Al Qasimi. Your Excellency, my dear brother, the Chairman of the Department of Culture and Tourism, Abu Dhabi, and the Vice Chair of Alif, Mohammed Al Mubarak. Your Excellency, my dear sister, the personal representative of President Macron of France and the vice chair of Alif, Bariza Chiari. Mr. Executive Director, mon cher Valérie Frelon. Your Excellencies, esteemed colleagues, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, you have no idea what a joy it is for me to be with you today, to be able to feel the buzz, the electricity, the sense of momentum and success that you've enjoyed over the last couple of days. It was only some six years ago, almost to the day, in a venue not far from where we presently stand, that a decision was made, a pledge was taken, to turn the screw of history, even if ever so slightly in the right direction. The rest is now actually a bit of history. I was speaking with fellow board member Richard Curran and saying Harvard should do a case study on Alif, how to do it right, how to be lucky, how to be able to bring the right people together, basically how to combine a number of ingredients when when the time was right, could create a magnificent outcome. Under the visionary leadership of the United Arab Emirates and France, an alliance was formed, an innovative, an ambitious kind of alliance, one that would, in short order, deeply alter the space in which it was deployed and for the better. Today, Aleph has become synonymous with agility, responsiveness, collaboration, and perhaps above all else, impact. Since 2017, from Mosul to Timbuktu, Kabul to Kherson, Raqqa to Abidjan, the foundation has supported over 200 projects in 30 plus countries establishing itself internationally as the main interlocutor for cultural heritage protection in conflict areas. In addition, under the exhortation, in fact, the promise of action, 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 Aleph also developed a unique and most consequential comparative advantage in the extremely rapid approval of specific crisis-tailored emergency response action plans, as in the case of the Beirut port explosion of 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic, which affected so many heritage operators on the ground, the ongoing war in Ukraine, in which cultural heritage is shamefully being targeted, or just last month, the terrible earthquake that struck Turkey, Syria, and the broader region. Hence, as I have the great honor and privilege of opening the concluding session of the inaugural Alif Forum, my very first words of gratitude go to each and every one of you, our invaluable partners and brilliant operators of Alif's projects around the world. The women and men on the front lines who day in and day out and often 
amongst the most challenging of circumstances and with peril to their own lives, do the work and take the risks that make all of the difference. In this existential struggle against barbarism, obscurantism, and the attempted erasure of our common universal heritage, you all represent the unsung heroes of our shared mission and noble enterprise. In this momentous fight, you are Aleph's valiant army, and this conference is first and foremost about you. In organizing this truly exceptional gathering, I wish to thank our incredibly generous host, the government of the United Arab Emirates. Starting with my beloved comrade, a man who is an inspiration to us all and to me in particular, the role model of the enlightened leader, the president of this magnificent federation, His Highness, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed. Speaking of luminaries, of course, allow me to recognize the equally unparalleled backing that Aleph has received throughout the years from President Macron of France, himself a beacon of light and his study and courage and leadership on an otherwise gloomy international stage. And in this list of Aleph's elevated patrons and guardian angels stands also the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, a permanent member of the foundation, represented on our board by a trailblazer in his own right, His Royal Highness Prince Badr bin Abdullah Al Saud. Thank you, Salim. Thank you to His Excellency, the Minister of Culture and Youth of the UAE for gracing us with his presence today and for his long-standing and most precious support of our work, going back to his time as ambassador to UNESCO in Paris. Bless you. Thank you to DCT Abu Dhabi and its visionary leader, His Excellency Mohammed Al Mubarak, author as a historian, one must always give attribution to the expression, the Aleph way, which is our corporate motto, and the country's tip of the spear on so many pivotal issues. I want to thank my brother Mohammed and to thank Mohammed's team as well, in particular, Rita Abdu Aoun and Amal Shabi, to whom the foundation owes so much and since inception. By the way, it's Rita Aoun Abdo. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank you, Rita. You've been with me in so many different uh, venues that uh, even, even your name becomes conflated with Louvre Abu Dhabi and the Guggenheim and everything else. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, of course, to our amazing Aleph Secretariat, who always make me look brilliant every single day for executing such a tour de force. My gratitude goes to, as we call him, l'amiral de la flotte, the admiral of the fleet, our very own Valérie Frelon, to Siandra Bialystok and the foundation's communications team, as well as to Egg, our local partner in organizing the forum. Thank you all. <laughs> Last but not least, we have an expression, you dance with the one that brought you. I want to thank the man who conceived of the idea behind Aleph in the first place, a scholar of archeology span turned museum director whose expertise and dedication to the field so transpired in the forum's proceedings, my friend Jean-Luc Martinez, as well as to the man who saw to the foundation's formal establishment with his trademark elegance and flair, my friend Jack Lang. These past couple of days at the Aleph Forum were indeed enormously productive and have already yielded significant results. 
In a spirit of wonderful camaraderie and great reflectiveness amongst others, the participants discussed the role of museums and emergency response in what we do. In that, we exchanged experiences and best practices in project management. We devised new approaches to associating local communities ever more closely with our work. We held in-depth sessions on key regions of interest, including Iraq, Afghanistan, the Sahel, and Yemen. On a strategic level, as a group, we reflected on the interaction between conflict and climate change. We pondered the singular contribution that cultural heritage protection can make in building peace. And of course, we talked about what's next for Aleph now. But perhaps just as importantly, we all shared meals together, we made new friends, we established promising contacts, we laughed, we bonded, and we found comfort in knowing that so many others around the world held a similar unwavering devotion to this crucial cause. In the years to come, while capitalizing on its incredible achievements and consolidating its many strengths, Aleph will continue to grow. I'm sad to say that, but as I have said in several interviews, I know that we will grow because unfortunately, we are in a growth industry and the times sadly demand more and more of Aleph. As we grow of the utmost importance, our Alliance will seek to expand its membership to new countries and new partners, expand its operational coverage to even broader jurisdictions, wherever the need arises, and especially in Africa. Expand also its remarkable network of operators and actors on the ground, and crucially, expand to new frontiers in the protection of cultural heritage, starting with climate change and its direct consequences on instability and conflict. Your Excellencies, dear friends and colleagues, I look forward to gathering here again next year in this shining city upon a hill in a country that next November will host COP28, the annual UN Climate Change Conference, to take stock of our collective progress, to renew our shared commitment through nothing less than action, 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 and as such, give even further flesh to our beloved Aleph as the gold standard of this vital repast of preserving and protecting the epic phenomenon that is human civilization. Shukran Jazelan, merci beaucoup, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much, Tom. And now for the final remarks, I'm honored to call to the stage His Excellency Salem al Qasimi, Minister of Culture and Youth of the United Arab Emirates. You have the floor. Excellencies, colleagues, and my dear friends, I'm truly honored to be speaking here to you, with you today. At the outset, I would like to congratulate ELIF and the Department of Culture and Tourism for hosting the ELIF Forum in the United Arab Emirates capital, Abu Dhabi. ELIF's journey has come full circle at this platform as we meet in the same city where almost seven years ago, the idea of the fund first took root. It was in Abu Dhabi in December 2016, following the International Conference on Heritage in Danger, when the UAE and France initiated a proposal for forming a fund to protect heritage in conflict areas. The idea became a reality when the creation of ELIF in March 2017. Looking back at the proceedings of the last two days, it would not be an exaggeration to say that we have achieved a lot in a very little time. 
That holds true for ELIF as well. In just six years, the fund had managed to achieve its key objectives of ensuring safety and preservation of heritage in conflict areas. As the second donors conference last year, over $90 million were pledged by international governments, private donors, and foundations for the organization's next five year cycle. The figure surpassed $77.5 million in the first cycle of the fund's inception. From the museums of Mosul, Rigga, and Damar, to the citadel of Bala Hassar, and to the minaret of Jam, Elif has been instrumental in reconstructing the work on heritage product, pro projects across a wide cross selection a section of heritage sites that hold immense value for humanity. Going forward, the fund promises to support concrete and sustainable initiatives to protect the richness and the diversity of the world's culture and harness the power of culture for peace, security, sustainability of all communities. Within 180 projects in more than 30 countries, ELIF had become a beacon of hope for not just reviving heritage sites, but also building capacities and protecting culture underlying its value for building resilient communities. It is indeed heartening to see how the local communities are deeply involved in safeguarding their culture and heritage and are emerging as a main agent of change as the key part in protection, reconstruction, and rehabilitation activities. The dual objective of 2023 to 2027 period remains focused on the development of ELIF's achievements and its continued effortness alongside major international organizations such as UNESCO. In line with the UAE's upcoming hosting of COP28, the country's work towards tackling climate change is complemented by ELIF as it focuses on the key areas of intervention so are to enable local populations to claim their cultural heritage. It was interesting to note how our partners are working to better integrate responses to the fight against climate and develop more effective solutions to the crises. In the last two days, we were closely following very thoughtful provoking discussions about the impact of climate change on heritage. We saw a great deal of engagement in how climate change is posing a threat to heritage and also heard how we can alleviate these challenges. The UAE, has joined hands with the international community to ensure that challenges due to climate change are tackled with urgency. As we mark 2023 as a year of sustainability here in the United Arab Emirates, we urge our partners to step up action to address the impact of rising global temperatures and other adverse effects on nations, communities, and their livelihoods. The upcoming COP28 this year will take these discussions forward and would work bring forth solutions that benefit humanities. Ladies and gentlemen, this forum illustrates our confidence in ELIF. We hope to see an even stronger alliance and greater global engagement with the fund. We shall continue to engage in meaningful dialogue to harness the power of culture, heritage, and promoting peace and sustainability. I would like to thank all the speakers who shared valuable experiences and insight about the role of culture and heritage in peace processes and how communities can benefit from rebuilding initiatives. Lastly, I would like to extend the sincere gratitude to His Excellency Mohammed Limbarak, Chairman of the Department of Culture, Tourism in Abu Dhabi, and Dr. Thomas Kaplan and his team, the Chair of the Arab Foundation Board, for facilitating this gathering. It is together and united we make our world a better place for us today. And for our future generations, we hope to carry the, for the we hope to carry forward the true and sacred message of humanity. Thank you very much. Thank you.